Hi friends, welcome back. In the previous chapter of Static Timing Analysis series, we studied about different terminologies associated with the clock. For example, clock latency, clock skew, clock jitter, and clock uncertainty. In this chapter, we are going to cover important timing parameters of a flip flop. So let's get started. So basically, there are three important timing parameters associated with the flip flop, which are clock to queue delay setup time of the flip flop and hold time of the flip flop now let's see each and every parameter in details so as we discussed earlier in some of our sta chapter whenever there is a whenever there is a active is happens at the clock fin of the flip flop the data the input data which are present at the synchronous data fin of the flip flop which is deep in this will get propagated to the output pin of the flip flop so this is nothing but clock to queue delay so the clock to queue delay basically accounts the delay between when the active edge happens at the clock fin and the data available at the output pin so this is nothing but the clock to queue delay timing parameter of a flip flop how this timing parameter is used to while doing the timing analysis we will be covering that in the next chapter the second important parameter of a flip flop is setup time so the setup time is nothing but a duration of time the synchronous input data which is present at the d input of the flip flop this must be stable before the trigger age of the clock so whenever there is a active trigger age happens at the clock prior to that during a specific timing window the data at the d input of this flip flop should be stable it should not be changing now let's see this in more detail in the next slide so here we have taken a register to register timing path where the data is launched by the register 1 and it will be captured by the register 2 and if you see here this is the clock this clock will be basically uh, going to the launch flop as well as capture capture flop and at this clock is the data will be launched by the register 1 so when at this clock is the data is launched by the register 1 in the next clock age the data will be captured by register 2 so the data will be captured by the register 2 at this clock age now what we discussed is before this age happens the data at input d of the flip flop should be stable basically it should not change so this is the time we are saying that this is the time between the red window during which the d input should not change so this time is called nothing but the setup time of a flip flop now there are few important points we need to discuss the first one is if the setup time is not met then data is not stored in the flip flop basically why do we need that they, there should be some time for which the data should be stable this is needed because this makes sure that the d input whatever the data is available at the d input is properly getting captured by the capture flip flop so basically the flip flop needs some time to capture the input data d and that time is nothing but called setup time so if the setup time setup time is not bait then this flip flop the capture flip flop will not be able to capture the data available at the d input of, the input of this flip flop now the second point is if the data is slow so if the data is slow for example this is our d input so if this is slow then instead of here this data will be reaching at some point here for example just take some point here so if the data becomes slow then the data will be reaching at the capture flip flop after some more time 
for example let's say that the data will be reaching here so instead of the rising edge happening here the rising edge of the data will happen here so if the data is reaching here then it is not satisfying the setup window the data is basically changing inside the setup window so if the data is slow setup time will be violated and hence there will be data lost the flip flop will not be able to store the data properly now similarly what happens if the clock is speed up in other words the clock frequency is high so if the clock frequency is high the clock time period will be less and if the clock time period is less this rising edge will be happening somewhat left side for example just take here so when the frequency when we increase the frequency when the clock is speed up the time period will reduce and if the time period will reduce then this rising edge is happening somewhere here so if the rising edge is happening somewhere here the setup window will, will also shift towards the left side because the setup time of the flip flop is going to be same so the setup window will also move to the left side if the setup window will move to the left side then the data change will happen inside that inside this setup window and what the definition of setup says is during the setup window the data should not be changing so when we speed up the clock when we reduce the time period again there will be a possibility that there will be there can be a set of violations and again the data will be lost so hope these two points are clear now let's see the third timing parameter of a flip flop which is hold time. So the hold time is the duration of time the synchronous input data must be stable after the trigger edge of the clock. So it is just opposite of the setup. The setup is the synchronous data input must be stable before the trigger edge and hold is nothing but the synchronous data input must be stable after the trigger edge let's see in more details in the next scene. so here again we have taken the same example a register to register path and the data is launched at this clock edge so this clock is this clock is basically going to both the launch flop as well as the capture flop so whenever the data is launched at this clock edge and the previous data will be captured at this clock edge so what happens is the whole definition says that the data at the synchronous input pin of the flip flop should be stable after the trigger edge. So the duration of that time during which the input data should be stable is called nothing but hold time of the flip flop. So this hold time will make sure that the data has been sampled perfectly inside the flip flop and it is not overwritten by the new data if the data if after the clock edge before the hold time of the flip flop if the data is changing at the d input of the flip flop then there might be a case that this data will not be captured properly by the by the capture flip flop now again there are few important points we need to cover the data delay must be greater than the whole time of the capture flop of the data to be safely stored in the capture flip flop what does it mean is the data delay so this is the this is the d input of the flip flop and the data will be coming here is nothing but the data which will be launched from the launch flip flop so whenever the data is launched by the launch flip flop the data will be traveled from d input to the q and from q to through the combinational logic it will reach to the d input so this delay this delay should be long enough or it should be greater than the hold time of this flip flop so that the previous data will not be overwritten by the new data so 
if you see here this is the data launch age so here from the data will be launched at launched by the launch flow and the data will take some time from here traveling from the d input of the launch flip flop to the d input of the capture flip flop so this delay should be greater than the hold time of the flip flop if this delay is less then the data will the d input will be changing somewhere in this hold window and if the data is changing in the hold window then there is a possibility that this flip flop has not captured the data properly so if the data starts changing immediately after the clock age, hold time is oriented and hence there will be a data loss. Now let's see how these setup and hold timing constraints are defined in the timing library. So here is a snippet of a timing library of a flip flop where this is the input D pin, input pin and the related pin is nothing but the clock. So the timing parameter of the synchronous spin of a flip flop which is d input is always with respect to the related pin which is clock so the setup timing constraint of the flip flop is basically given as a two dimensional uh, table in a form of a, of a two dimensional table where table 1 where, where table 1 which is index 1 so the index 1 is basically nothing but the data transition and the index 2 is nothing but the clock transition and based on these two uh, arrays a table, a table is given and this table basically contains the timing constraint value for example setup and this is for hold hold rising and setup rising so this is the data transition and this is the clock transition at the this is a rising setup so at the rising edge of the clock what is the data transition value and what is the clock transition value based on these two values a set of value will be picked up from the values table okay for example the data transition at the rising edge of the clock is 0 0.012 and the clock transition is for example 0 0.215 so this index 1 is nothing but a row value and this is a column value so corresponding to 0 0.012 we have to pick up the setup value from row 1 and corresponding to index 2 with to value which is 0 0.215 we have to take the column value so row 1 and column 3 value is nothing but our setup constraint value so this is row 1 and this this is column 3 so the setup constraint value is 0 0.1234 and similarly we can find out the hold constraint value so as we discussed the setup and hold timing constraint for the synchronous spin of a sequence itself can be described in terms of two dimensional table as shown in the previous slide the setup and hold timing constraints are on the input pin D with respect to the rising or it can be falling whatever the flip flop uh, property is as of the clock pin of the flip flop. The two dimensional models are in terms of data and clock transition time at the constraint pin. So the constraint pin, the data pin, the synchronous data pin of the flip flop is always a constraint pin and the related pin to which the timing constraints are measured is nothing but clock pin so index 1 here shows the data transitions at the rising edge and the index 2 is showing the clock transition at the rising edge for the setup rising constant so here is an example as we discussed if the data transition rate is 0 0.0123 and the clock transition rate is 0 0.215 then if the data transition is 0 0.012 and clock transition is 0 0.15 then this is row and this is column this is first row and third column first row and third column value is 0 0.1234 so this will be the setup constraint value so here we are going to conclude this chapter on setup and hold timing constraints if you have any doubts please write down in the comment section also if you like this video please 
hit the like button and also please do subscribe this channel so that you will not miss the next video on static timing analysis thank you very much